Hello and welcome, Somerville Media Center community and SMC Facebook Live viewers. My name is Tina Cabral and I'm front desk coordinator at SMC. I'm here today with Jesse Norris, organizer for Mutual Aid, Medford and Somerville, or MAMAS. MAMAS is a grassroots volunteer-based organization to support members in need during the COVID crisis in the Somerville and Medford communities. From pet care to child care, to financial assistance, to grocery shopping and rides, MAMAS covers it all. So thank you for joining us, Jesse. Hello. So let me start off by asking you how are you doing amongst all this craziness that we're dealing with? I think I'm doing okay today. Um, I think like everyone, it comes in and out, but uh, recognizing that we're doing the best we can every day and uh, I'm feeling pretty excited to be here with you today. Well, thank you for joining us again. And uh, let's start off with, I know I mentioned a couple of resources um, during the intro, but let's start off with a list of uh, the support services that you offer and how, your, how MAMAS is structured to meet those needs. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, we have a hotline that anyone can call or text from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And that number is 339-545-1315. Um, and so that's the first place where you can reach out if you have any questions or want to understand what we're doing. And then we have a number of uh, initiatives that we support folks on from financial redistribution to grocery shopping to supplies. Um, if you need help with childcare um, or just emotional and spiritual support, just need someone to talk to uh, during these really difficult times. Um, anytime that you call the, the hotline or if you go online, you can fill out a, a form where you can say, these are the types of things that I might need support with. And then we have a group of coordinators that will follow up with each individual to make sure that they get the support that they need. Okay, that's great. Now, um, I know we were talking earlier and you mentioned that you guys just like a little over a month old. I mean, how were you guys able to launch this in such a short amount of time so efficiently and so effectively? Yeah. Um, so mom is officially launched uh, March 12th, but some of the core organizers had actually been laying the groundwork over the, uh, over the winter with something called the Snow Shoveling Brigade, which was their attempt to help elders in their community or folks that needed help shoveling snow. Um, and so they'd started reaching out to their neighbors and building up that network. And then we had a really light snow <laughs> winter, as you know. And so they didn't have as much opportunity to, to work in that regards. But once the COVID crisis started coming up, we'd started that foundation already and then um, kind of built out. The first two things were the neighborhood pods in which folks can be the point person for their block and say, I'm here as a resource. If you have any questions, uh, let's start at least just talking to our neighbors that are closest to us that we can support. And then from there, uh, kept building out larger and, and have more of this infrastructure with the hotline and um, following up with different coordinators. So I know with the neighbors, you have a neighborhood pod um, network. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So in the first couple of days, um, when we were trying to build out, you know, who can help others, we had folks filling out a form if they wanted to be their neighborhood pod leader. And so wherever you were based, we put a little pin on the map and then drew a little boundary radius around it. And then those individuals would flyer to their neighbors and say, hey, I'm Jesse. I'm here as your pod person. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And those became, you know, text threads or email threads for those that are closest to you that you could support. And so if you go on our website, uh, Mutual Aid Mamas, you can see that map. And then now, even if you don't know who your point person is, you can go to the map, scroll to your street, and then you'll be able to see the person that's there um, for your particular neighborhood. That's great. So that's great for people to have uh, that direct contact if they if they're really in need of help such as like grocery shopping or whatnot that they have a person that could be living right next door that would be able to they can reach out to and right. can help them out with that so the turnaround so making the turnaround time very quick right right yeah and so with if anyone fills out our form within the day you'll get a response and you can say you know i need grocery shopping today and then we can make sure to mobilize quicker if it's you know a couple days away um, we can organize and, and folks can send along their shopping lists or whatever requests they might have 
We've also had folks, you know, saying, my dad lives in Somerville and I'm not there to be able to help him. Might y'all be able to organize resources? And so we've also organized on behalf of others in that respect. That's great. Now, um, that might be something, a need that could be such as grocery shopping or maybe a pet care. It might be a need that, that could be met more easily than a case where there might be a domestic violence or an abuser in the household. How would such a situation like that be met? Yeah, so we've had a couple instances of this where someone might call a hotline um, and we actually have folks, one of the core organizers works for a domestic violence uh, organization here in Boston. Um, and so in cases where it might not be that we can be the direct person to provide support, we know what organizations we might be able to point them to and at least be that first friendly voice that they can reach out to and then get further support where it makes sense. Um, we also do that with respect to housing and housing justice um, and connecting with the local uh, governments and other organizations where it makes sense. Yeah, I was actually on your website. Well, I've been on your website for a couple of days now and I noticed that you have hyperlinks to dozens of, of resources. Uh, you have direct links to the city, city guidelines and uh, uh, coronavirus, any updates, um, the federal updates. So there are hyper, the immediate links and information just at one's fingertip. Um, yeah. If they, ha you know, if they have a device, what would be the case that if if it's an elderly per person, for example, who might not have a device? Yeah. So we um, try to reach out to folks wherever they're at. So we actually have an entire accessibility team that's really focused on folks that might be elderly or have you know speaking different languages or visually impaired, hearing impaired. And so we have the hotline, so you can actually call. And if you can't fill out the form yourself, then the hotline person can fill it out on your behalf. And then that person can call you a record. Or if it's someone calling in Spanish and the hotline speaker only speaks English, then we have Spanish translators on hand that can uh, follow up with that request. And so trying to understand, you know, meet people where they're at um, and then reach out to folks in our network that might be able to help them a little bit more. Do you have um, volunteers, aside from English and Spanish, obviously, do you have Portuguese, Haitian Creole, any other languages? Yeah, um, so we have Portuguese, Haitian Creole, uh, Polish, German. Um, we've had folks um, reach out that they can help translate in Arabic. Um, so really trying to understand, you know, what are, as you know, Somerville has like 87 different languages that are spoken. Um, and so we've also been trying to reach out to the different community groups or churches that, that already have connections with those immigrant communities um, to also be able to, to reach out there. Um, so those I think are the primary languages and we try to make sure that any documents that we have are available in each of those languages as well. And then, um, as I mentioned, if you call the hotline, then we can at least like connect you with someone else that, that might be able to translate. Now, what are some of the um, critical needs that you're seeing right now in the community? Any, any needs that uh, really need to be addressed right now? Yeah, I mean, I would say financial distribution is one of the biggest ones, recognizing that when this crisis hit, tons of workers were laid off or furloughed overnight, um, and you still had to pay rent on April 1st. And so that was one, I think, the, the primary ways in which we we're helping. And so within this month, we've already redistributed $70,000 to folks, just neighbors helping out other neighbors. Um, and then from there, we've also been building out our housing justice team and recognizing that folks might need to move home to be kicked out or not be able to pay rent. And so recognizing what are your rights as a tenant and then where might you need to actually move. Um, and so those are two big areas. And then the third primary is just groceries um, for folks that might not be able to get to the grocery store themselves. Um, so we're making 10 to 12 grocery deliveries a day um, and also recognizing that in Somerville, we might be able to do it on behalf of someone in Dorchester. And so building bridges with other communities beyond just Medford and Somerville. That was actually my next question, if you go above <laughs> and beyond Somerville, Medford area. And, um, yeah, um, so we do go uh, in other areas and right now what we've also been doing, um, as you might've seen from our website, we have a lot of resources on how to replicate and there are other mutual aid groups that have been popping up. And so we've been building relationships with those organizations and recognizing when can we just send the direct request to them, say, hey, we got this on our hotline, maybe y'all might be able to do it or also, um, depending on the type of support we might be able to do it ourselves. Now, given some of the newest guidelines coming out of the state, city and state, such as the child care, um, no more child care, no more school, private or public for the rest of the year, are you seeing any increased needs for, for um, in those regard for child care, for instance, with the newest guidelines? 
Yeah, um, so I would say our child care team is, is up and running. Um, one of the primary things that we've done is built out online resources spreadsheet of, okay, if your kid's in fifth grade, here are some resources you might be able to point them to, or if, you know, here's what does exist and also building out languages and or building out resources in other languages in that respect. And then in addition, we've had um, folks create initiatives to pair, you know, students that might be able to help tutor um, or do more virtual tutoring or, or interactive sessions with kids. Um, so yeah, I would say that that group is definitely increasing. And then in respect to pet care, we've actually had a couple people call saying, you know, I'm in the hospital, I can't care for my cat, might you be able to help feed my cat? <laughs> um, and so I think we'll start seeing that increase as well. Um, and recognizing, you know, there's a lot of ways in which people might need support. Right, and we know this week for Somerville um, and probably BPS, there's a the school break, there's the spring break this week here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're seeing a surge in a lot of those needs as well. Yeah, and so for each of our, so there's a core team, about five of us that helped start to lay the foundation for this. And then with each of the initiatives that you see on our website, we have you know two to five people that are working as a primary coordinators. Um, and so they're kind of the experts in what is what is uh, available in each of these regards. Um, and so they've been building out their own resources. And I think that's the reason also that we've been able to like create all of these at your fingertips, as you mentioned, um, because we have a larger team that are like pulling together the different resources that might exist. So yeah, definitely in terms of pulling together your resources, as I was going through your, your spreadsheet, and we talked about this earlier, uh, you have hundreds and hundreds of volunteers practically on demand um, on your spreadsheet for, again, for a range of uh, support and capacity and tools that they can offer anyone in need. Yeah, and so that was um, one of the first things that we started doing was, you know, this offerings form of saying, you know, these are the types of things that I'd like to be able to help in our community because recognizing that everyone has something they might need and everyone has something they can offer. Um, and so over the last couple of weeks, we've been refining that because it can be kind of overwhelming to go to a spreadsheet if I'm someone that might need help and then I go to the spreadsheet that has hundreds of people, where do I even begin? And so one of the things that we've been working on doing is kind of helping call through those resources and then being the point person of, okay, you have this request, here's how this person can support, rather than having to try and navigate that fully yourself. And in what ways, what are the, some of the uh, ways that you find uh, members are reaching out to the most? Is it the hotline? Is it email? Is it a neighborhood pod? Um, I would say it's all of the above. Uh, the neighborhood pods, depending, are, are really active. Um, the hotline has received over 250 calls in the last month, so that can be you know <laughs> several calls an hour. Um, and then the form for uh, reaching out if you need support has seen 300 people filling it out in the last 10 days that it's been live. Um, and so I would say each of those different pieces is, is really active, um, just depending on, you know, what's your level of comfort and, and how might you reach out. Um, and so just trying to meet people where they're at. So, um, and let's talk about the privacy. I know you, you guys uh, make, sh make sure, make it known that people in need, their privacy is, is respected and it's met um, along with spreading the word. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So there's a couple different ways. Um, now that everything is pretty digital, we do have this trusted group of coordinators that is reading those requests and it's not public. So when we started about a month ago, if, if folks were familiar with Mamas, we had a need spreadsheet that was totally public. People would put their name, put their email, put their phone number and say what they needed help with. We quickly recognize that that might not be the best way, especially if you're someone that's vulnerable reaching out to the community. So now we've obfuscated that a little bit so that there's at least one person that's reading it and you can say whether you are comfortable with people knowing your name or knowing your email or maybe you want us to reach out on behalf of you so you don't have to service anything about your personal information. Um, so there's just that one level of protection in that regard. And then with each of our coordinators that have access to that information, um, we're in touch with them on a weekly basis to say, are you still active? If not, then you're not able to see any of our systems. And we've also done that to build in flexibility that volunteers might come and go and might be able to work more in certain weeks or might need to take a step back. And so we've been trying to make sure that each of our systems are protected and only the people that are actively able to support um, with that private information uh, have access to it. So can you walk me, like, uh, I just wanted to give the viewers um, sort of an idea of, or an example of a person, what a person in need 
the pro of them going through the process. Yeah. So what would a scenario where I'm a single parent um, that's working in an essential, uh, I'm an essential worker. I work in a hospital, so I have to go to work. I have to pay the bills, but I have two kids and um, it's spring break and I have no childcare. My mother used to watch the kids, but now I can't expose her. Um, I cannot, you know, um, jeopardize her safety. So what would happen in a case like that? Yeah, that's a great question. And I am not actually as active on the childcare. So I know that we've had, um, okay, so first what you would do is if you either wanted to call the hotline or you could fill out the form, um, it's tinyurl.com slash askyourmamas. Um, tried to make it easy for folks. Um, and you could say maybe, uh, let's say that maybe you needed a little bit of financial assistance as well. Um, and so you could say, hey, I need, this is the goal that I'm trying to raise for, um, you don't have to necessarily explain yourself. We, we're here as your neighbors to, to trust where, what you might need support with. And then if you needed childcare, then you'd also say, hey, these are the age of my kids. These are types of activities that I might need support with. And then within the day um, that would come into our systems, one of our volunteers would read that and then reach out to you directly and say, okay, I'm going to, do you feel comfortable if I send this out to our e-list? Um, so we have Google groups for each of these different types of uh, initiatives. And if they needed financial support with, then we would send an email to our Google group on their behalf that has 300 to 400 people that are reading that and then can respond and contribute directly to um, that mom. And then if you needed childcare, then the childcare <laughs> folks would reach out to you and, and say, you know, maybe they could coordinate babysitting if that made sense for y'all's family. Um, we've also had folks asking if there's um, live-in nannies uh, and seeing, you know, maybe we can match with some of the students that now don't have housing because they're kicked off the universities. Um, but yeah, I think depending on, on what types of support you're looking for, then, then we would have someone following up with you in that regard. And what about, so in terms of that, the child care issue, the financial issue. And then I also have a concern about my mother who lives alone in, co in um, congregated housing. Yeah. Um, so one group that we've been really actively partnering with is the Somerville and Cambridge Elderly Services. Um, so they actually changed their, their restrictions. And now if you're 60 and above, then you can receive meals through their services and they deliver, I think, on a daily basis. So depending on what she needed, then maybe your mom could get some support through the elderly services community. But if not, then we have groups of volunteers that are doing grocery shopping. So you can say, here's my shopping list. This is my preferred grocery store. Um, and if you needed us to, uh, if you needed support paying for the groceries as well, then that's also something that we've been helping folks with. Um, and then we could deliver those to your mother <laughs> if she needed that. Um, and then I, I would say the last piece is um, the emotional and spiritual support team. So we've had folks that just need someone to talk to. Um, and so we have a group of volunteers that are either, you know, trained therapists or have experience working with folks in difficult situations or are just there to chat if you are feeling a little lonely. Um, so just depending on, on where you're at, then, then we try to meet you there. So basically with one call, I, I can have all of these needs met. Yeah, that's what we try to do. So, and also in going through your website, I notice it's sort of, so one thing that you guys, um, one of your, your missions is that you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Why, why do more work when it's already there? It's basically your uh, depository for all this information. You're just aggregating just all these resources together. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the critical piece there is that, um, sadly, unfortunately, the government has not been responding. You know, they said, all right, now you can't go to universities. Now you can't go home or now you can't leave your house and, and didn't really provide any alternatives for folks that needed this kind of support. Um, and so try to be able to respond to the urgency that, that the community needed support in. That's great. Now, I know... Um we were discussing earlier, and I mentioned that um, our program director, Dave, and um, our uh, board chair, uh, Mr. Lynch, had mentioned Mamas to me. That's where I first heard about it. And that same day, I went for a walk in Union Square, and lo and behold, I saw your sign in front of the apartment complexes. I actually took a picture of it, too. And I was like, wow, uh, this, is, this is great. And you had all the information. You had the, the the hotline, the website, the email, you know, for everyone to, to get in touch. Are there more of those flyers? I imagine there are a host of those in, in um, like yeah. I said, it's in the apartment complex, but throughout the city. 
Yeah, I mean, we've been flyering. That was our first way of getting the word out. Um, we also have signs that are posted. People now have been printing banners. And I think one of the coolest initiatives actually is a mom took on, uh, she re received support from us and she's like, I wanna figure out how I can give back. So she actually started um, and she built uh, designed t-shirts with the rainbows that, that kids have been making and putting in the windows. And so she took those rainbows, put it on a t-shirt and then is now selling those t-shirts and, and the profit from that is going directly into the Mama's Community uh, Fund to be redistributed to other neighbors. So there's a lot of ways in which people are looking to get the word out um, and have been really creative in that regard. That's great. So, you know, um, we will be posting um, the hotline, the email, all the information um, on our website. Do you want to just um, shout it out again? for Yeah. The um, so you can go to mutualaidmamas.com uh, and then our hotline is 339-545-1315. And if folks want to send an email, uh, mutualaidmamas at gmail.com. So call your mamas, right? <laughs> yes. So I bet you hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as you guys are uh, doing an amazing work, um, getting all these demands uh, met, resources out to people, um, are you thinking about the future for mamas? What what is what does the new world look like after we start going back into the new normal? Um, yeah, what are mamas going to be looking like. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of things. Mutual aid as a concept or as a as an initiative is not new. That's been around in a lot of ways um, for many many years. Um, and I think one of the things to recognize is that folks needed support before this crisis began. And we wanna make sure that we can continue this trust, continue to, to reach out to our neighbors and, and build this uh, for, for long into the future um, and, and see us being able to sustain that going forward uh, to support neighbors wherever they're at. Are you seeing any new, um, any, uh, new demands, any new needs? I don't know about new needs. Um, I think one in particular that we've had a lot of folks reaching out for is just how do I file for unemployment? This is a new territory for me. And so we've had uh, folks, you know, walking through that process. Um, I think that was like the, the most recent one in, in housing, uh, housing justice. And I think most folks now are, are now learning about tenant rights, um, which was not something that I was personally well versed in before this. Um, but those are two primary areas that, that now we've been um, supporting the community in, I would say, a lot more in the last few weeks. And now you mentioned also, aside from the tangible resources offered, um, if someone wanted to call and just talk to somebody, if they're feeling lonely during this is isolated period, if they're um, maybe feeling even, you know, uh, really desperate thoughts, uh, running yeah. through their mind or anything like that. How do you connect them to the right people, the right resources? Yeah, so we've um, we've had a couple tough conversations about kind of what is the role of mamas in this regard, um, where there are, we've, we have had folks in the community reaching out with suicidal thoughts and point them to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, we've had folks asking if we can connect them to rabbis in the neighborhood. Um, and so that's one, one avenue we've taken. Um, we've had, uh, you know, school kids that are like, I want to chat with elderly uh, folks in, in nursing homes. And so kind of connecting people in that regard, but depending on, on the type of uh, support they might need, then we'll definitely point them to the right direction. Um, there's also just for folks that don't know, there is a group of therapists that are providing free therapy um, for, I think, mainly in the Somerville and Medford community. Um, but that's also another resource that's on our website, if you did want to talk to a trained therapist. Now, I know in the beginning, I asked you how you were doing, and we all have um, full-time jobs or a couple of jobs, um, and you are doing all of this with your team. Um, how, do you, how do you juggle all of that? Yeah, uh, so I have a full-time job. Um, I've let my team know that this is something that's really important to me, and, and either formally or informally, I'm going to be making time to carve this out, because I am fortunate to still have a full-time position being paid. Um, and so one of the things that we've really tried to build in our infrastructure is the flexibility for folks. If you can be more present, maybe I can work, you know, two to four hours today, but I really can't think about this tomorrow. There's other people in the team that can, can take on that slack. Um, and so that's, I think, one of the key components is, is that flexibility and, and support that we have. It's not just one person trying to run this whole ship. Right. 
So, um, so as we start wrapping up, any, any final thoughts, any words of encouragement you want to give to our viewers, our members, um, anything that you want to leave, leave behind for them to, to think about? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is that this can feel like a terribly isolating time when you're trapped in your home. But one of the key things that we try to recognize is that we have neighbors right next door that are there. Um, and I think we're getting to know our neighbors a lot more than we did before. Um, and starting to build out that network and, and community building uh, in this time of being stuck in your house has been really powerful for me. Um, so definitely, I would say recommend uh, doing that and continuing to do so because they can support you in the future. Definitely. And I always say, um, definitely do what you need to do in order to ease your mind. Yes. Um, you know, whatever that may be, meditation, um, going out for a walk, because it's important to maintain, uh, aside from our safety and our health and our well-being, the mental peacefulness and sanity is as important. And yeah. we cannot forget that, um, given everything that's going on. So I want to say again, you guys are doing an amazing job. Thank you. Um, just incredible. And, and I'm just so, I, I still can't get over that you just officially launched in March. And, <laughs> and you've got already like hundreds of people already <laughs> on your spreadsheet who, who are, you know, there if you need any type of resources, if you need a, a skill set also. Anything that you need, it's just a phone call. Uh, the, the hotline number again, 339. 545-1315. That's the hotline number. Call or text that number as well. Yeah. Uh, you can reach out to them also on their website, mutualaidmamas.com or their email. If you have a question, ask your mamas at gmail.com. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, well, um, Talk about, you know, in, in, in this time, we've got the phrase, you know, we're here for you. We're in this together. You know, yeah. you hear all those phrases now. And you guys are really doing, Mamas is really doing their part in stepping up to that and really living up to that. So um, I thank you for that. I thank you for your time. Um, stay well, stay safe, stay sane, stay happy. <laughs> Uh, continue to laugh and we'll all, we will get through this together and definitely the work that Mamas is doing is helping all of that. So um, thank you for um, joining me today, Jesse. Thank you, Tina. And I hope, I hope, um, you know, I hope to have you again. Let's talk, let's talk more again, you know. Happy to. It's a very fluid situation. So I'm sure we can definitely have another conversation about it and get the word out to more people. And um, this is Tina Cabral with Somerville Media Center signing off.